Today, we're going to look at how to expand a surface base while completing the contract, Explore Mimis. As these will be our first Kerbals to set foot on this minty surface, there will be lots of science to collect. Science that will be augmented by two new science parts. This episode will also see us constructing and launching a brand new lander. But the main topic will be looking at how we can easily attach that lander to our existing Mimis base, a technique that can be applied to any additional base modules you may want to add in the future. Let's get started. And although the main purpose of this mission is going to be to crew the base and to attach on that landing module to our base, I figure I might as well pick up a couple of contracts along the way, so here I have. Explore Mimis, where the objective is to put yourself into an orbit of Mimis and to perform a spacewalk. And as this is the first time in this series I've had Kerbals in orbit about Mimis, we'll be doing EVAs to collect science anyway, so this one's pretty much for free. And I have plant a flag on Mimis, goal, plant a flag on Mimis, it's as simple as that. Well, why don't we take a quick look at the tech tree. So I'm gonna just kind of zoom this out so that you can see kind of where I'm at on the tech tree if you're following along with your own builds. But I am going to unlock one more node. If I go way down here, I have electronics for 300 science. And the main reason I want to unlock that is because it gives me two new science part. The magnetometer boom and the double C seismic accelerometer. It is always a great idea to unlock those science parts so that you can collect more and more science with your mission. So we're going to grab that one and we're gonna get started with our build. And the mission here is going to be to get to a base that we had already put down on the surface of Mimis in a previous video. And here is said base. And for this mission, it would suffice to simply land anywhere nearby and EVA over your Kerbals but I want to do better than that. I want to dock the lander to one of these docking ports that are here on the side of our base. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to show you that if you're in a situation where you want to expand upon a base that you've already started, I want to show you an easy way in which you can attach additional modules, whether those modules have crew in them or not. So let's get into building our lander. We're not gonna build it here. We're gonna instead build this in the vehicle assembly building. And I'm gonna design this mission using kind of the same structure as I did with my previous moon mission. So I'm gonna start with just imagining a lander sitting on the surface of Mimis, and I would like to get that lander home to Kerbin. How much is that going to cost me? Well, if we go into our Delta V map, we can see here that it is 180 meters per second to get from Mimis's surface into low orbit about Mimis. I always find these numbers are a little bit tight, so I'm gonna add on another 25% to bring that number to 225 meters per second for the purposes of this tutorial. And then it is a 150 meters per second to break out of Mimis's SOI. That will get us going back towards Kerbin. And of course, we're gonna be using Kerbin's atmosphere to break break and get back down to Kerbin's surface. So if we add that all up, that's only 375 meters per second, but I'm also going to think about this thing doing the last bit of the landing. So I'm gonna add on an arbitrary about 100 meters per second to bring my budget up to about 475. It doesn't have to quite get to that. Anything between 375 meters per second and 475 meters per second will do. And we're going to start with the Mark 1-3 command pod. It can hold three Kerbals. I'm going with the pod instead of something like these Mark II lander cans because I'm going to need to come back through Kerman's atmosphere and the pods are much more designed for that than these things are. So we're going to go with this guy. And we're going to put a parachute on the top. Before I do that, I am going to put on a 1.25 meter fairing base. We won't build the fairing yet and we're going to put the parachute on top of that and the reason for that is is because i like to put on also the launch escape system and if i put on the interstage nodes that gives me something that i can attach further things to yes i do know that you can put on radial parachutes but i actually don't like the look of the radial parachutes on these things so i'm going to just go with this as my design. If you want to put on radial parachutes instead, go ahead and be my guest or for that matter, keep 
you can completely miss the launch escape system, I honestly really don't care. So I'll go into thermal. We're going to obviously put on a 2.5 meter heat shield. And underneath that, we're going to put the TD-25 decoupler. And underneath that, we're going to go with the Rockamax brand 2 adapter because we're gonna go down to a smaller diameter. And underneath here, what we're going to be building is our science bay. All our science equipment's gonna go down here. So we're gonna go into science. We're gonna grab the Science Junior. We're gonna grab the Mystery Goo container. We'll turn it that way, put it about there. We're gonna grab a new science part, the Double C Seismic Accelerometer. And then on the other side, we're gonna put on our Magnetic Boom. And we're gonna put on the more familiar thermometer and barometer. Also, this thing is going to have to dock and it's going to be docking on the side. So I'm going to take a Clampatron docking port and we're going to stick that right here on the side. We're going to put the snap on right about there will do for now. And of course, we will want to be able to communicate back with the KSC. So I'm going to put on a single Communitron 16. That should do nicely. And now we got to start thinking about fuel. Now, I want to increase the diameter here on the bottom. You'll see why in just a little bit. So I'm going to, even though I don't need this much fuel, I'm going to grab the Rockamax X200-8 fuel can. And we're going to stick that right under that. And for propulsion, I'm going to go with the ever-reliable LV-909 Terrier liquid fuel engine. We'll tweak the texture to be more like that. Now that gives us way more delta V than we need so all I'm going to do is tweak down the amount of liquid fuel and oxidizer until I get down to more like what I'm looking at and that's 423 that's a little on the low side 616 that should be good for now and we're gonna put on obviously some landing gear we're gonna use the LT-1 landing struts we're gonna put three of them these are pretty heavy especially for Mimis three will more than suffice but you want something that will get down below the engine and in fact we're gonna need some clearance here well you'll see we gotta still dock with the base forget well we'll get to that but for now we're gonna finish off this lander with three mark one illuminators for landing lights I always like to remove these from the light action group and instead toggle them with the gear action group I then added on some oxstat solar panels on eight-way symmetry angling them at about 45 degrees behind which went eight Z100 batteries. And because these ones are interfering with the docking port, I removed this panel and battery from symmetry, allowing me to delete them without affecting the other seven. Next went on a pair of landing rungs near the science equipment, just to give something for our scientists to hang on to. This was followed by two extendable ladders to get up to the hatch. Even though on Mimis, the Kerbals can easily fly using their EVA packs, I like to have ladders anyway. The one thing to always be sure of with ladders is to test them on the launch pad as Kerbals have a tendency to get hung up on them. But with this working fine, I can revert back to the VAB and continue with the build. All that was left was adding on a few more lights. I also decided to remove the solar panel and battery that was clipping the ladder, just like I did on the other side with the docking port. And finally, I remember to add the valuable EVA experiments kit to an inventory slot in the command capsule. And if we take a look here at our stats, we're at 589 meters per second, comfortably above what is required with a thrust to weight ratio 0.81 on Mimis. That's going to be plenty to perform our landing. This looks like it's ready to go, but now what we need to do is make sure that we can attach this to the base. So in order to bring it over to the space plane hangar and attach it to our base, I'm gonna to need to put it into a sub assembly and I'm gonna be attaching it by this docking port. So the way to do that is to grab another docking port or anything else that you can attach to the docking port. Attach that on there. Make that the root part. This now allows you to grab this and notice that this docking port is now a node. We can throw this into our subassembly drop zone. This is just going to be temporarily, so I'm not even going to name it. Just save it like that. Go new. Don't save any of this and we'll go over to the space plane hangar and we'll bring out our base. I can grab my unnamed 
uh, lander. We can rotate this around. There we go. And stick it onto here. And there we go. Now they are docked together. Now, we need to make sure when these are docked that these landing struts are coming down to the same height or else it's going to be, you know, it's, whoops, it's going to want to fall over. So the easy way to do that is to simply grab the whole thing, bring it down to the point where the landing gear that are already on the base are just clipping in to the surface texture. And then we're going to take our move tool here, grab those, and we're just going to slide them down just a little bit so that they are clipping in at about the same amount. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that looks to me pretty good right about there. So that now when this is docked, all these feet are going to be sitting on the surface just fine. Okay, let's slide this back up again. Now comes the million dollar question that I'm sure is in everybody's mind. How on earth are we going to do this docking this looks like a pretty tricky enterprise actually we're going to make it really easy what we're going to do is simply put some wheels on this thing that's it and you have a lot of options if we go over here and start taking a look at wheels i mean i could get into these kind of things and uh you know obviously i would translate them a little bit better than that but i actually don't like using the rover wheels for this because they're fairly heavy they use up a reasonable amount of electricity and there is a lighter and cheaper option in the small landing gears. Yes, I know these are for planes, but I'm going to use them for this. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to put four of these down here on the bottom. Now, right now I'm on mirror symmetry, um, which is the default symmetry in the space plane hangar, but I would actually like them to be mirrored the other way rather than this way. The choice of which way it's going to mirror is actually dependent on the root part. And the root part right now is this cupola module. So if I want them to mirror the other way, all I gotta do is change the root part to this command pod. So if I do that, now obviously this is gonna mess up the rotation. So let's see if we can, there we go, get it back the way it was. But now if I grab this part, and now it notice it's mirrored the other way, that's what I want. And I want the wheelbase to be as wide as I can, but still be underneath this tank so i'm going to take these and i'm just going to flip them the other way around we're going to just roll them this way and we'll stick them like that temporarily and then i'm going to grab that and put them here and roll it around that way again temporarily so that now we have some wheels now you might be going well these wheels have no propulsion you're 100 percent right but we do have rcs in fact the rcs is built right into this capsule this capsule has 30 units of monopropellant, that's going to be plenty for simply driving this in. So we're going to use RCS to drive this around the surface of Mimis. And in fact, the fact that I'm going to be using RCS, I want to get into the show the actuation toggles. I don't care about yaw, pitch, and roll. We're not going to use this for attitude control. I don't care about port starboard or dorsal ventral. I only care about forward and aft, going forward and backwards. So we'll use RCS to push this thing forward and we're gonna use these little wheels to steer our way in. Speaking of which, I should probably make sure the front ones are steering enabled. And because I wrote, flipped these around backwards, I should remember to invert the steering, steering direction, change that to inverted. The back ones I don't want to steer. So I'm going to take the steering off. So we're only steering by the front wheels. And then we can take these and tweak them so a little bit nicer. And the other thing I like about these rather, also, you know, besides the fact that they're lighter, is you can tuck these to the point where they almost disappear. And in fact, if you're a little more clever in the build, you can definitely make them completely disappear once you retract them like that. Right? So that's the other thing I like about these. Let's see if we can do the same thing with the, let's uh, extend those again. Let's see about the other ones, move those around too. Actually, they're okay. I think they are about lining this way. Be in a little bit. You're not gonna be doing anything fancy with these. You're just gonna be driving them a short distance on a flat surface. So you don't have to worry about having a really wide wheelbase or anything like that. The one thing you do want though, is you want the level of these wheels to be the same as the level of the landing gear. So once again, we're gonna grab this. We're gonna bring this down. We're going to take the move tool and we're just going to slide these down a little bit. So again, 
the gear just clip into the surface texture in much the same way. There we go. That should do just nicely. We'll retract them so that they're out of the way because they will definitely start in a retracted position. And I actually want to get into the action groups. Oh, I can't get into... Okay, we'll do this. <laughs> because this is still a Tier 1 space plane hangar, I don't have action groups. That's okay. We'll take this over to the vehicle assembly building. So right now, this is the root part. So I should be able to grab this, throw that away, and then we'll go over to the vehicle assembly building, and we'll continue our build here. And I don't want these on the gear action group. I want either these down or the wheels down, but never both. So what I'm going to do is go over to action groups. We're going to take the gear action group. We're going to remove the small landing gear from it. And I'm going to put these guys on action group number one. And that gives me the ability to control when they are retracted and when they are not. Now we gotta look at how do we get this thing from low carbon orbit to Mimis. So once again, we go to our Delta V map to get from low carbon orbit to Mimis costs 930 meters per second. And then it's 150 meters per second for the capture. And then according to the map, it's 180 meters per second to land, but this number's pretty tight. So I'm going to, for the purposes of this tutorial, add 50% to that to bring that to 270. And if I add that on to the 375, which was the total from my previous step of the build, I bring this up to 1,725 meters per second. Now, what I also like to do is have the transfer stage to deal with the upper part of our orbital insertion as well. So I'm going to add on a rather arbitrary about 1,000 meters per second to bring this up to 1,825. If it's a little bit less than that, that's fine, or a little bit more, but something in that range is what I'm shooting for. So let's get into that build. Now, of course, what we need to do is clean this all up. So we're going to start with a TD-12 decoupler, and we're going to have to enclose this in some sort of a fairing. So we're going to payload, grab the 2.5 meter fairing. We're not going to build the fairing for now, but eventually there'll be a fairing to close in this mess. And then under that, I'm going to put a Rockomax X200-8 fuel can and I found that I needed a little bit more fuel. I'm going to use two of these R-4 dumpling external fuel tanks. We're just going to stick them here underneath the fairing like that. That way they're nicely tucked away here. We're going to actually rotate them 90 degrees and then we're just going to slide them in little basketballs. Maybe slide them down a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. Maybe make them stand out a little less by coloring them silver. There we are, okay. And then what's really tempting is underneath all this, I mean, it's a 2.5 meter part, is to grab the Poodle, that's your standard 2.5 meter vacuum engine like that. And if we take a look at our total delta V, we're a little bit short. It's 1,764 meters per second. But if we take a look at our thrust to weight, 1.77, that's much more than what we need. This is kind of too much engine for the job. It's a lot more weight than what we really need. So the next one down would be the Terrier engine. And if we put that one down, although our Delta V is great, our thrust to weight, 0.47, remember this is supposed to handle the upper part of the stent. That's a little bit small. I wanted to get it into around the 0.9 range at least. So it'd be lovely if there was an engine between these two that's vacuum rated. Unfortunately, there is not. But why don't we put on two Terriers, right? Now, you might be going, how do you put on two of them? Well. If you have the Making History DLC, you get these engine plates plus a whole bunch of other wonderful parts that kind of fill in these gaps as well. And they are very versatile, allowing you to add as many engines on the bottom here as you want. But we're going to work around that because I, I'm doing this without having any of the DLCs installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab me a cubic octagonal strut. And I'm gonna put on two of those just like that. They can stick anywhere. And then under that, we're going to put our two Terrier engines just like so. And I'm gonna change the texture of these Terriers. Let's change them to that. And then we're gonna grab these struts and we're simply going to slide them upwards just a little bit like so. 
Okay, and now what we have are two of these Terrier engines. They look all right, just kind of sitting there like that. And if we take a look, our Delta V of 1825 is gonna service us nicely and a 0.9 thrust to weight ratio lovely and then finally we're going to do one more thing i'm going to go into structural grab an octagonal strut i'm going to put this right here on the bottom and in fact because i really don't like the look of this i'm going to hide this in here just a little bit and that is to help with connecting on to the next stage it gets a little bit glitchy in here when you have parts that are translated and all that kind of stuff and just putting a base for your next decoupler helped me out with that so speaking of that let's get into our booster so I'm going to budget 3,800 meters per second for getting into low carbon orbit a nice generous budget for tutorial purposes and if I add that on to the 1725 I have so far that brings me up to a total Delta V for the mission of 5,525 and the booster I ended up building well it's right here in sub assemblies if you recall last episode I showed you how to build a booster library so I just simply did that saved my booster as booster 11 I'm gonna add that here on to the bottom and for those people that are following along with the build I will go over all the parts that are in here but before I do that I do want to talk a little bit about this you want to make sure this is all pretty finicky in here we got ourselves a TD-6 decoupler and then three of these octo struts on top of two advanced reaction wheels so that we will clear these engine bells and then some struts to stiffen this all up but you do want to make sure this stages whenever you have something complicated like this check your staging and the easiest way to check your staging is to save launch and use the console menu to put yourself into low orbit and now what I can do is well got to deploy this to get it out of the way and then we're gonna take a look here this is the decoupler I'm a little bit worried about so I'm going to grab that decoupler and I'm going to simply say decouple and now let's activate those engines and it looked like yeah we staged away cleanly so you want to make sure when you have complicated staging test the staging out make sure nothing is glitched together let's revert ourselves now back to the vehicle assembly building and go over this booster alrighty so let's see we already went over some of this I used four struts here to kind of stiffen this up because it's obviously a little bit flaky and then a 2.5 meter fairing to close off that bit here now let's go take a look at the main core main core starts off here with a jumbo 64 fuel can underneath of which is an x200-32 fuel can and bottoming it all off is a main sail engine and that gets me a nice 2.1 thrust to weight ratio which will be great for that early part of that ascent once we lose the radio boosters and on the bottom here I put on six of these small tail fins four of them are on four-way symmetry and then I put these ones on two-way symmetry to give me six and that was of course to bring my center of lift down comfortably below my center of mass and then attached to these I put on two radial boosters you might even look at this and say it's got some SLS vibes to it the boosters are attached with some fuel lines to do some asparagus staging so I have all three engines down here on the bottom stage all going off at the same time as far as the boosters go I have each booster is three of these FLD-800 fuel tanks then a T400 then a T200 and then the little slanty nose cones on the top they're connected with just the TT-38K radial decouplers and to make sure everything's connected here well I also have some strut connectors there for them all told and some separatrons to help bring these things away but before we can take a look at our launch stats well we do have to clean up this top end here so on the top here I'm gonna put a launch escape system that involves a TD-12 decoupler flipped upside down and attached to one of these nodes I'm also going to get rid of that truss structures because I don't like seeing it and on that we're going to put our launch escape system we'll close this off with the fairing and then set up the abort action group 
It's then down to the next fairing. Now for staging all this, what I like to do is to disable the staging on the fairings and instead activate them as well as detaching the escape tower with an action group. And taking a look at our final stats here, make sure this is at sea level. We have a launch thrust to weight ratio of 1.33. Remember, all three of these engines are going off at the same time. I kept the mainsail at full and simply tweaked down the reliant engines until I got that thrust to weight ratio. I wanted the mainsail on full because if I take a look at that stage where it's gonna be flying alone, it has a thrust to weight, we'll put this on vacuum, of 2.05, which will be good for that stage of the ascent. And this gives me a total vacuum delta V of 5,540 meters per second, comfortably above our budget. And as this is my third trip to Mimis in this series, we'll be skipping over the how to get there part. If you need a hand with that, I would recommend this video here. I myself prefer to launch into an orbit that matches the plane of Mimis's orbit, thus minimizing the mid-course corrections. But others find it more simple to launch into an equatorial orbit, to each their own. Either way, I made sure to take advantage of my new science equipment. The magnetometer can only be used in space, and as it isn't biome specific, once you collect it in both high and near space, you've done everything that you can. That said, the science hall is a healthy one, as this 180 science in near space about Mimis demonstrates. On the other hand, the seismic accelerometer can only be run on the surface of worlds, where it is biome specific so it will have to wait until we are landed. Either way, after each round of science collecting, I made sure that Shogun, our scientist, collected all of that data and safely stowed it in the command capsule. Also aboard is our engineer Danilo, who will have plenty to do in the next episode when they will have to put together a rover on the surface of Mimis. The crew is rounded off by our veteran pilot, Valentina. And if two of those names do not sound very Kerbal-y, well, that's because they are names of two of my wonderful Patreon patrons and YouTube members. I'm going to take this opportunity to welcome aboard the most recent people to join the team. Brian Rodriguez, Connor Goss, Wafflebird, Philip Kidman, Fuzzy Juan Kenobi, and Glenn Jackson. Thank you very much for your support and, of course, for the ongoing support of everyone in this community. As for landing close to a specific target, I've covered that for the moon and Mimis is much, much easier. Now that we're down, we'll put ourselves onto one of these docking ports. Uh, let's see. Let's go for this one over here. So we'll set that now as a target. We're also going to control from our docking port and then we're going to bring down our wheels remember that was on the one action group and this allows us to now lift up our static landing gear and now it's simply putting on rcs and pushing ourselves forward we'll just come around here towards the side the reaction wheels in the capsule also do a great job of keeping yourself upright. So slow down a little bit. There's a little bit of sliding happening here with Nimbus's slippery surface. Push ourselves towards that. Again on the nav ball, just put the prograde vector on top of the target just like you're regularly docking. We should be able to just drive right in there. And boom, and there we are. We are now docked. We got ourselves our connection here. We can now put down our landing gear again. Oops, oops, of course that's gonna bring down those. So let's put them both back up. We're getting a little bit of a hop happening here, but that's okay. There we go, that looks pretty good. Then just a one should retract those landing gear. There we go, another little hop in Mimis's low gravity, but there we are okay and we can transfer we don't even have to go outside we can just transfer our crew over to their new home and while they get comfortable and of course begin collecting that sweet sweet science why don't i go over the main takeaways from this episode 
I spent some time going over two new science parts, the magnetometer boom and the seismic accelerometer. Always look for nodes that contain new science to speed up your unlocking of the tech tree. Most of this episode detailed the building of a brand new Minmus lander, during the course of which I looked at how to attach multiple engines, even if you do not have access to engine plates. But the main topic was how to use simple wheels on base modules to maneuver those modules where you need them for your surface bases. And although I'll be drawing this episode to a close, I am not done with this mission. Join me next episode when our crew will be constructing this simple rover out of parts stowed in the base. I hope to see you then.